This is the story of a small Indian village named Jagdishpur, which had seen very little development in several decades, largely due to the gross ignorance and superstitions of the villagers. All that changed one fine day, when a young boy from the same village helped them overcome their ignorance by shattering age-old myths and fallacies. The village, no wonder, soon turned prosperous and became a role model for other villages too. Want to know how this happened? Come and feel how this revolutionary transformation occurred and how the fate of the village changed. The Awakening of Buddhia A Story of a Prosperous Village Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. <laughs> Oh, Buddhya, Parvati, Nanne, Misri, all of you together, come, sit. Tell me, what brings all of you here? Well, uh, Mukherjee, is it true that a nuclear power plant is proposed to be set up near our village? Yes, even I have heard this. But why do you people seem so upset? This sounds uh, good for a village. What are you saying, Mukherjee? Yes. We have heard that these power plants emit a lot of radiation into the environment which may kill us. What? Even our cattle and infants may suffer a lot of abnormalities. <laughs> Parvati, I think you're overreacting. If it were so, all the people working in a nuclear plant would already be dead. <laughs> no, no, no. It's not true. We need not panic at all. Okay, tell me one thing. Do you know that the sun god whom we all worship is itself a source of radiation? The houses in which all of us live also emit radiation. Even uh, what you eat and drink, watching TVs, listening to radios, even your mobile phones, it all contributes to radiation. Look at him. Can you identify him? <laughs> He's my grandson Samir. He has just arrived from the city. Now Samir will explain further. Come Samir. My warm regards to everyone. Parvati auntie, did you recognize me? Oh yes, that's Samir. You're a young man now. Yes, grandpa is correct in his views about radiation. Actually, radiation is a kind of energy which exists everywhere around us in nature. In fact, is a part of life. And when it comes to a nuclear power plant, radiation emissions are indeed insignificant. These are absolutely negligible. Got the point? Okay, tell me one thing. How many of you have ever had a chest x-ray? Do you know that an exposure of radiation dose resulting from a single medical x-ray is equivalent to living in the vicinity of a nuclear power plant for about 20 years. Is, is it so? so? But we have even heard that those who are working in a nuclear power plant and living around it are at great risk and are prone to various types of cancers. Bisri auntie, your information is incorrect. Simply working in a nuclear power plant and living in the vicinity of the plant doesn't cause cancer. Well, in that case, no one would ever want to work there. And auntie, if you remember, four people from our village died of oral cancer last year because of tobacco chewing. Whereas people working in a nuclear reactor with the help of safe equipment, tools and clothes, despite working there for decades, are not exposed to radiation. As a matter of fact, radiation is used in CT scans and MRIs to detect cancers and to cure them with the help of radiation therapy. Got it? But Samir, I met Savita yesterday. She said that living around a nuclear power plant makes it impossible to become a mother. It would not be possible to conceive a child. How true is this? <laughs> Parvati auntie, Savita auntie has a misconceived notion about radiation. It is totally a rumor. Radiation is actually helpful, not damaging. You get it now auntie? 
and Budhiya uncle, if you remember, by using an infected syringe, last year Saryu, son of our very own Ram Naresh died. But a proper dose of radiation to sterilize the syringe could have prevented the infection. Thus, radiation used in medical field saves lives as it protects human beings and animals from infection. But Sameer, why a nuclear power plant in our village? Can't we get electricity by using any other means? We've heard that a nuclear power plant would have adverse effects on our mango orchards, agricultural lands, crops and fisheries. Good question, Budhiya uncle. Though there are other means and alternatives to generate electricity, the electricity produced by a nuclear power plant is clean, green and economical and it actually prevents environmental pollution. Therefore, all your crops, orchards and fishes remain unaffected. Whereas electricity generated by coal and other sources leads to significant environmental degradation. In fact, lots of obnoxious gases are produced, resulting in deterioration of our health. One more point, if we talk about producing electricity from various sources, we must first realize that we are rather short of resources. Whereas we have ample nuclear resources to generate electricity for many years to come. Also, let me tell some more interesting facts. With food irradiation techniques, we can prevent fruits and vegetables from rotting prematurely, onions and potatoes from sprouting early, pest infestation in legume crops like pulses, peas, rice, etc. Resulting in increased shelf life of these products. What's more, it boosts the productivity of your seeds also. But son, we are quite aware that uh, electricity can be generated by other means also like solar power and wind mills. Then why focus uh, only on nuclear energy? What a brilliant question, Nanhe uncle. Undoubtedly, we can go ahead with solar power and wind mills. But in both the cases, we require more land and space to produce electricity on a massive level. And during the day, we can get solar energy, but during the night and on cloudy days, how will we produce electricity? And when it comes to windmills, we need adequate wind velocity practically all the time. Whereas a nuclear power plant generates electricity round the clock, requiring far less space and land. Understood? Additionally, the electricity produced in such a way is cost effective and is quite economical. But Samir, we have also heard that nuclear energy is quite risky and hazardous and during emergency situations, it can cause massive damage to life and property. Parvati auntie, you must be aware that nothing in this world is as dangerous as fire. Yes, ever since man started using fire some 800,000 years back, it has been the greatest destroyer of lives and has claimed millions of people and their property. But nowadays a small kid roams about fearlessly carrying a matchbox in his pocket. Do you know why? This is because we have learned to use it safely. In a similar fashion, if you follow utmost care and the guidelines and safety norms, accidents can be averted. Another point to be noted is that many people die in train and air accidents. But then do we stop traveling by rail or airplane? Also, every year thousands of people due to floods, earthquakes, landslides and in daily road mishaps lose their lives. So, let us clear these negative thoughts from our minds and welcome the good moves. But Sameer, my son, how are we going to benefit from the nuclear power plant? We have heard that the government is anyway going to grab our lands. How are we going to possibly survive then? Well, uncle, if the government is going to acquire your land, you will get handsome compensation in lieu of that. It's the government's responsibility to resettle and rehabilitate you. And just imagine the prosperity of your village after commissioning of the nuclear power plant. Where today you're getting 5 to 6 hours of electricity daily, you'll get electricity round the clock. Schools will be constructed for your children in your village, where your children will get free education. And hospitals will be built to take care of all your medical needs free of cost. Besides this, pitch roads, arrangement of pure drinking water, establishment of community centers and job avenues as per qualification would be made available to you. In a nutshell, you all will flourish and your village will be prosperous. Sameer, we do agree. But tell me one thing, how safe are our nuclear power plants 
especially when it comes to earthquakes and tsunamis. What will be our fate then? Oh yes. Oh, yes. yes. What will be our fate? Uh, calm down and please be quiet. In a way, your concerns are valid. But let me inform you one thing: that all the nuclear power plants in our country are quite safe and secure. They get the various clearances from the government authorities for implementing a project only after scrutinizing at various levels. For any proposed site for a nuclear power plant, a wide range of geographical surveys are done for many years. If at all there exists a rare chance of a tsunami or an earthquake occurring, no permission is granted by the governing authorities to build a nuclear power plant there. And I am sure you remember when there was an earthquake in Bhuj district of Gujarat and tsunami in Chennai. Our nuclear reactors continued to generate electricity safely even in such crucial moments of desolation, and they stood unaffected like a rock. <laughs> But my son, why should we need a nuclear power plant at all? We are quite well and happy here. Our livelihood depends on agriculture and fisheries. Then why should we bother about electricity? Yes, my son. Our fathers and forefathers were also in the same profession, and we too are enjoying the same, and have been raising our families. After all, how do we benefit from it? We are fine already. Yes, we are meeting both our ends well by getting food and cloth. What else do we need? Yes, of course. We are living a pretty good life already in our homes. So why should we bother? Well said. It's nice that you are thinking. But if everyone started thinking the way you people do, our country would remain exactly what it used to be 60 years ago. Today, after more than 60 years of independence, India stands gracefully with a few select countries of the world. Just imagine if all the people would have thought of farming and fisheries and remained in the villages like your forefathers would it have been possible for our country to produce doctors engineers scientists sportsmen and industrialists if you fell ill who will treat you who will mass produce groceries for your daily needs who will do research or invent new things i am surprised that even after 60 years of independence there is no change in your mindsets pardon me but you are still slaves of ignorance and superstition Budhya uncle overall development of our country is essential for which we need electricity a country can prosper only when there is adequate electricity so when electricity comes to your village your tube wells can irrigate your fields you can run equipment and have tractors to sow high quality seeds your crops can grow with up to 10 fold yields which will surely enhance your standards of living parvati aunty merely meeting the ends is not sufficient Today your kids don't go to school. They don't get proper education. They don't get adequate amount of nutritious food. They don't even get proper medical treatment due to lack of qualified doctors. How long will you destroy yourself by having blind faith in quakes and fraudulent saints? When will you open your eyes? Your kids can live a fulfilling life only when your village prospers. Imagine your kids can become doctors, engineers and scientists. Just think how happy you will be. and the fame your village could enjoy and misri aunty you can continue living happily in your thatched house but not your kids you are still entangled in the same 60 year old conservative thoughts today our country has flourished and progressed india has produced world class scientists world class doctors engineers sports personalities industrialists who have made our country proud at international level and look at yourself still entrenched in the relics of the past If they would have thought like you just imagine what state a country would be in look at me if my parents had not sent me to the city for better and higher education perhaps i too would have been an ignorant and illiterate person and would be wandering here and there today the time has come to think again collectively do we want the progress of our country and village or will we stay the same throughout our lives and our kids illiterate and yes Another thing if you want development then the most important thing is generation of electricity more the electricity more the business and industrialization and then only our village will prosper and our country will flourish now i leave the decision to you to make a choice between science and superstition think collectively as to what all of you want to do and misri aunty one more thing while we sit here and talk 
and criticize nuclear energy, radiation, etc., our engineers and officers are living longer and healthier lives with their families and contributing to the development and progress of the country. Yes, Samir, you are absolutely right. All of our doubts have been resolved. I have to say that not only have you emancipated us from our age-old thinking, ignorance and superstition, but also empowered us with the right information to change our mindsets. And for that, we are all ready now. And yes, one more thing. Please don't believe the miscreants and unscrupulous elements in case they mislead you against nuclear power. You should not fall in their trap. Understood? We have understood, Samir. Dear son, you have opened our eyes and dispelled all our myths, false beliefs and misunderstanding in a commendable way. And son, you have certainly made us feel that we must contribute to the progress of our country. All of us are ready to make our village and country prosperous and to be partners in progress. And maybe all of you will be astonished to know that due to clean and green nature of nuclear power plants, these stations have become sweet homes and havens for countless birds and butterflies along with numerous plants and animals. Dear Samir, after hearing you, we all are very eager to visit a nuclear power plant. Would it be possible for all of us to go to a nuclear power plant? Why not, Uncle? I can make arrangements for all of you to visit a nuclear power plant so that you can know some more facts and feel the energy revolution even more closely. So, have you seen? They all are ready. And now, it's your turn. Thus, Budhiya and other villagers decided to visit a nuclear power plant. What happens when Budhiya and his friends take a trip of the nuclear power plant? How do they enjoy their trip? What do they observe there? To know more, simply grab the forthcoming issue. Budhiya visits a nuclear power plant. The story of the journey to a nuclear power plant. Nuclear power, nation's power, clean energy, clean India.